G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, today I thought I'd do a review of a project that I got into a little while ago. So let's have a look at Carver. So Carver hasn't been out for too long. Uh, it actually works on the Cosmos chain uh, and it's a DeFi program. Now, it was my second best uh, performer at the moment, but it's definitely had uh, quite a pullback uh, of late and I've had some other ones well not so much a few other ones but definitely one at least Aave uh, overtook Carver Synthetics Network is still my number one uh, performer Aave would be my second and then Carver would sort of be my uh, I think it's about fourth or fifth at the moment but still doing pretty well anyway let's have a look at Carver alright so as we can see uh, it's down significantly over the last 30 days and let's have a look at the max I think it's actually at a really good uh, buying point right now. I'm hoping that we've sort of found the bottom, but look, if we haven't, then so be it. But you can see that uh, not that long ago, so it was up around $5, uh, and currently, what are we sitting at? $2, so it's 50% off, you know, right there. It's over 50% off, and it looks like it's uh, starting to, you know, push back up, but we'll have to wait and see, you know. The, it's the weekend at the moment, and I'm not sure if this uh, correction that we've been having of late is completely over, but I am sort of expecting that uh, at some time in sort of October, the, mar the markets are going to start to bounce back. I think there'll be a stimulus package that'll come out, uh, and we'll see some upside. But could be wrong. None of this is financial advice. It's just my pers personal advice. All right, so let's go down and have a look at the markets that you can pick this up on. So Kraken, Kraken's actually an investor in uh, Carver. Uh, Upbit, never used Upbit. Binance, uh, used Binance a number of times. And for any Australian viewers, you can get it on uh, Binance Australia or Coinspot. Uh, they both have that there. So not a bad place to uh, go and pick stuff up if that's, uh, you know, Carver something that you're interested in. Now, Carver is not in the top 100 at the moment. It was, it, I think it crept into about 99, 97 or something like that. I think it's currently currently at about number 138 or something like that. Uh, I can't see it on here exactly where it is. There we go, 138. So it's outside of the top 100. And look, coins that you pick up from outside of the top 100, uh, they generally have a fair bit of potential uh, to the upside if they do well. Now again, you've got to do your own research and things like that, but I like Carver. I got into it quite some time ago, uh, and I got into it for under a dollar. I think I was picking up for about 70 or 80 cents at times. I definitely bought some uh, that were just over a dollar, but mainly around that kind of 70, 80 cents is where I was picking it up. Uh, so I was pretty happy with that again. I, I was picking it up, you know, somewhere down in here. Uh, not quite 40 uh, cents. I was probably picking it up. Uh, yeah, somewhere in and about there. Anyway, maybe I was getting it for 60 cents. I thought I was getting it for a little bit more. Yeah, probably somewhere around about here, I'd say, uh, after May. But I, I was pretty sure maybe I did get some. I'd have to go back and check. But anyway, Carver, let's go and have a look at their overview. So as we can see, Carver here, they've got over $20 million locked up in assets at the moment, uh, predominantly Binance coin, but they are moving to Binance USD, that's coming, and Bitcoin's coming soon as well. And as we can see, people are borrowing it, so you can stake Carver at the moment, uh, and the returns aren't too bad. Uh, they were higher earlier, and they've uh, pulled back a little bit, but generally it's not too, not too bad at the moment. And you can see that people have borrowed a total of sort of $9 million uh, dollars there uh, and getting it in USDX. Now what I'm really excited about is we go over here to Carver. All right, this is their Twitter page. They are introducing Harvest. This is something I'm really interested in because on their uh, platform at the moment with Carver, you can uh, lock your Binance coin up with them, but then you have to borrow against it and they give you USDX that you can then uh, use to you know, go and buy other stuff at some stage. As far as I know, USDX, uh, I'm not sure it's accepted anywhere else at the moment. So that's uh, a little bit disappointing. I'm hoping I'm hoping that that uh, has changed, but to my knowledge, it hasn't. So, you know, you can borrow this USDX and at some stage in the future, you're going to be able to spend it. But currently, uh, that I'm aware of, uh, you can't use USDX anywhere. Someone, another company did come out with another USDX. Uh, it's not the Carver one, so I'm not aware of USDX being able to be used anywhere at the moment. But 
harvest is something that I'm interested in. So we go over in here and have a look. Right, introducing Harvest IO, the world's first cross-chain money market. Okay, what is Harvest? Harvest is the world's first cross-chain money market that enables you to earn more with your digital assets. With Harvest, you will now be able to lend, borrow, and earn with assets like Bitcoin, XRP, BNB, uh, the Binance USD, Carver, and USDX. Harvest is the first of what will be many applications to utilize the Carver blockchain security, price feed module, and cross-chain functionality to provide open and decentralized financial services to the world. How does Harvest work? On, the har on Harvest, there are three major activities. So number one is supply. You can safely supply your digital assets on Harvest and earn interest. That's what I'm definitely interested in at the moment. In the, the moment. Uh, I, you know, I, I may borrow at some stage in the future, but I'm more interested in this earning interest. So number two, borrow. You can use your digital, ass digital assets as collateral to borrow others. So that's where it might be good. You know, you can uh, take the interest you earn uh, and buy others. It uh, doesn't sound uh, so bad or, yeah. I mean, look, that's if you want to go and borrow, you know, borrowing, be careful. It's just not normal loans. There's interest that has to be paid and things like that. So, yeah, my personal advice would be just be careful when you go and borrow, uh, particularly when you borrow. You might borrow one day when everything's up really high and then it all drops significantly and then all of a sudden you owe more than what you had. I'm sure there's going to be safeguards and all the rest of it in there and things like that. But, yeah, I, I'd prefer not to borrow uh, if I don't have to, obviously, you know, you want to buy a house or a car and things like that. It's exactly what has to happen. And I'm sure this will be able to be used uh, for that in the future. But again, just be careful if you're going to go into the borrow. Earn. Suppliers and borrowers earn hard. That's the governance token of Harvest. How Harvest is built. Harvest is an application built on Carver. As such, Harvest leverages Carver's existing validators for security, bridges for cross-chain asset transfer, and partners services such as Chainlink Oracles for price reference data, excuse me. So they hooked up with Chainlink uh, quite some time ago. Version one of Harvest ships with support for supply side deposits and hard incentives for BTC, XRP, BNB, BUSD, USDX. Version 2 ships with borrow functionality and borrow side incentives for those assets, plus expanded functionality of hard governance on chain. So the initial assets, are again, going to be Bitcoin, the Binance coin, Binance's USD, Carver's USDX, XRP, and hard. An application built on Carver, Harvest will access to any asset on the Carver blockchain. In the Carver 4 Gateway mainnet upgrade, the BEP3 bridge will be expanded to support Bitcoin, XRP, BUSD and others, making these assets available for use in Harvest money markets along with native Carver assets like Carver, Hard and USDX. Built as an open and permissionless application, Harvest is accessible by anyone, anytime, anywhere in the world. Exchanges, fintech apps and financial institutions can integrate Harvest's money market products and provide earning and borrowing opportunities directly to their users. Harvest Governance As seen in all decentralized money market applications today, a governance token is necessary for proper decentralization and to ensure the ongoing evolution of the application. To compete in the current environment, it's also critical to have incentives to bootstrap liquidity and incentivize user participation. Hard Token Decentralized Governance and Incentives the hard, token primary, the hard token's primary role is to give holders a voice in the Harvest platform. Collectively, hard holders are responsible for managing key parameters of Harvest, such as what assets are to be offered, how rewards are distributed among, amongst assets, as well as any platform fees, etc. Hard token will also be used to incentivize early participants, giving them a voice in the ongoing evolution and management of Harvest. Carver tokens and compensation. All right. In designing Harvest, it was carefully evaluated if the Carver token could be used to also govern Harvest application. Three major items prevented this. Harvest evolution needs to be driven by the participants that use it. We believe that a fair distribution to users is necessary for long-term success. I like that they're doing this because Carver, uh, a lot of their tokens, you know, they, they're trying to be decentralized. 
but a lot of their tokens are held by Carver themselves and also held by uh, Binance. They own a number of them because they were released on Binance and things like that. So the actual Harvest tokens, though, they are going to be uh, fairly well distributed. Uh, as we go further down, you'll see what I mean. The users of Harvest money markets may or may not be the same as those that hold Carver today, giving reason uh, to not uh, conflate the governance of the Carver blockchain with that of the Harvest application. So again, I like that they're doing that. The, the, the actual Harvest will be a lot more decentralized than Carver itself. Not that you know any of these centralized sort of platforms at the moment over time will just naturally become decentralized, uh, but you know, yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. Having uh, supplier and borrow incentives is a must in today's yield oriented DeFi market. Very true. If we use the Carver token for incentives on harvest, we would need to inflate Carver upwards of 50% supply. Given that not all Carver holders would be participants on harvest, inflating Carver would meaning meaningfully dilute existing Carver holders to a degree that is not acceptable. Lastly, the Carver token needs to be preserved as a reserve asset responsible for recapitalizing the lending platform. Conflating its value in multiple use cases creates a cascade of problems and can, can potentially undermine its value as a reserve asset. So it looks like they've put some thinking into this and that's good. All right. Hard compensation for Carver stakers. Harvest and any other applications that utilize the Carver blockchain security should in theory compensate Carver stakers directly for that security and cross-chain infrastructure. As such, we felt it was appropriate that hard tokens should be distributed uh, continuously pro rata amongst Carver stakers. So I'm staking Carver and if you want to get in and uh, stake Carver, you will be rewarded. And that's what it's all about. We're all trying to find ways to invest uh, and you know make some passive income really. So this might be something that you're interested in. It's definitely something that I'm interested in uh, and I'm going to uh, be onto hard in this Harvest IO straight away. So let's have a look at the distribution. So 40% is for incentives, 25% is for the treasury, 20% is for Carver stakers. So if you're staking Carver, you are gonna get a reward in how hard, how well hard does as well. 10% for the team, this is what I like. So only 10% is going to the team. And I think that's fair. And then 5% that went to the uh, IEO, so the initial exchange offering. So this is generally a lot bigger. Uh, and in the actual Carver thing itself was a lot bigger as well. So you can see uh, Carver stakers. Now, don't get me wrong, Carver themselves will have staked their, uh, have a, a say in this, uh, Binance chain, you know, all the people that got involved in Carver early on, they're gonna own uh, quite a predominant part of that. But that is a total of 34 sort of five percent that could possibly be taken up by you know the early investors and things like that. And it's not going to be all of them because I'm a Carver staker and I'm not an early investor. You know I got in after the IEO and all the rest of it. So it does go to show that there will be some good decentralization there. Now don't get me wrong, there's still going to be whales that are going to be involved in this. But the good thing is they shouldn't be able to manipulate it. Uh, you know, to the extent of maybe that they could the actual Carver token itself. Again, Binance would own a lot of the Carver token and things like that. So I really like that they've done that. And that's, you know, it, it leads towards decentralization. And decentralization and free markets, that's what we want. We don't want things being, you know, completely owned uh, by sort of one entity that have, you know, ultimate sort of control over the rest of us. And again, that doesn't mean there won't be big stakeholders. Of course there will be, but yeah. I don't want to harp onto that too much, but I really like what they've done here. Now, there will be a max supply of 200 million hard tokens. So there's only a limited supply of them. Don't get me wrong, 200 million is a lot, but still, there's a fixed supply. It's There's not going to be more. The distribution of hard tokens will be as follow, and we went through it before. So there's 40% uh, incentives for suppliers and borrowers. So that's me, you, and anyone else that gets in involved. So 40% of it is gonna go towards us, and I'm sure that is over a sort of time span. It's not like instantly, they just throw all 40% to everyone. 25% goes to the treasury. 20% to Carver stakers. So anyone who's staking Carver is going to get some of that. 10% goes to the team, which is fair. They've built it. They, they need to be rewarded, and that money will go towards, uh, you know, further building of, you know, things like this. And 5% goes to the initial exchange offering and things like that. Note, 
To achieve a fair distribution, there will not be any seed or private sale of the hard token. So I like that. Again, no private sales. No one's going to be able to come in early and just, you know, buy everything up. Uh, it's going to be you know, distributed fairly. So uh, again, leading towards decentralization because they're the things that are doing the best at the moment. Like, you know, you can look at Uniswap and Sushi Swap and things like that. Things that are, you know, fairly uh, decentralized. They're the things that are exploding at the moment. And so that is what things like this need to do to keep up with the rest of the market. Right, development roadmap. So September 21st, so that was a few days ago, they're doing the test net of Harvest version one. Internal testing, uh, external audit, they're getting other people to come in and audit the platforms and things like that. So that's really good. I like that it's not just, you know, trust us. Uh, they have other people uh, come in and have a look at it. And we'll go back here and have a look at the Carver overview in a minute and show that they have actually had external auditing. So October 15th, 2020, Harvest version one ships along with Carver 4 gateway upgrade. Hard distribution begins. So we're still a little while away, you know, around about sort of three weeks or so from that. Supply upside deposits and hard incentives for BTC, BNB, hard and USDX begin. December 30th, 2020, Harvest V2, expanded uh, harvest governance, supply and borrow. So this is what's interesting. Bitcoin, XRP, BNB, BNB USD, USDX from Carver and Link. So you're going to be able to use your Chainlink stuff because Chainlink are hooked up with these guys. So, you know, put some Link in, earn some rewards on it. Sounds pretty good to me. Borrow side incentives also begin uh, after December 30th. Again, I'm not looking so much to borrow. That's not to say I won't ever borrow in the future, but really it's more about me uh, being part of the supply chain. So I'm gonna lend my stuff out and earn some interest on that. Now in saying that, I am going to get into, uh, I'm already in Carver anyway, I'm going to get into all of this. I'm not going to be throwing everything into it. You would be silly to throw everything into one single project. Be careful. You know, there's no guarantees that this is going to kick off and, you know, go to millions and billions of dollars. Although I like Carver and what they're doing and their team, they've been around, they've got some big backers and we'll have a look at that. I do believe this will be around for the long haul and I think it will succeed, but that doesn't mean that it absolutely will. That's just my personal opinion. It's not financial advice. I'm only going by the things I've heard and read. I don't have any inside information uh, that you aren't privy to or anything like that. This is just, you know, what my instincts are telling me. So I'm excited about this and I will be getting involved, but don't get involved if you don't understand the risks that come with all of this. Now, what the community is saying. Harvest IO is a logical addition to the DeFi ecosystem taking shape around Carver. We think the choice it brings to investors to lend and borrow assets, uh, not well supported by existing platforms, is really exciting. As is the ability for Carver stakers to earn hard tokens and participate in the new platform's governance. The Carver community is one of the most active in crypto, so we look forward to joining with them to support Harvest launch and future growth. So that's from Digital Capital Assets Management. All right, Carver shifts from DeFi application uh, to application platform. It means that Carver token holders get exposure to very uh, every new idea and implementation in the ecosystem. This is exciting and something we haven't yet seen in the blockchain space. Michael Anderson from Framework uh, Ventures, so venture capitalists and things like that. And lastly, Harvest is the first money Lego to be built on Carver's cross-chain DeFi. So they will probably end up being something similar to uh, Maker. Uh, leveraging Carver's infrastructure not only allows the application to tap into Carver's security, cross-chain features and price feeds, but also Carver's community, which has been very supportive over the past year. We can't wait to see what other money Legos will start to be built and stack on uh, top of one another, all without the crazy gas fees. Yes, and the gas fees on Ethereum are killing me at the moment. Uh, I went and did my Kyber network and uh, synthetics network today. And after claiming all my rewards, it actually cost me more money in the moment. So it totally wasn't worth it. And I'm just gonna have to stop doing that. It was not so much Kyber network. I think in Kyber network, I still just made a little bit of a profit, but certainly not in synthetics network. But I am gonna do a follow up video to synthetics network as it looks like they have optimistic roll ups coming. But that's a separate story. So all of this looks really, really promising. And there's Brian Kerr, he's the CEO. Uh, of Carver. If you get on YouTube and uh, just type in Carver, you'll see a number of interviews with him and other people uh, and videos on how to 
uh, steak and all the rest of it. So I'm really, really excited by this. Uh, I heard about this a little while ago, uh, and I was super excited because at the moment, again, all you can really do is just borrow money uh, with your Binance coin uh, using the uh, Cosmopolitan, uh, sorry, the Cosmos uh, wallet and things like that. Uh, I'm not so much uh, looking to borrow money. I would rather just, uh, you know, lend it out, I guess, and, and earn some passive income, some interest. That's really what I'm looking for at the moment. So let's go over here and have a look. And again, so we saw all of this, but what I wanted to do is go to, is it overview I think I went to? No, I think this is overview. So no, that was the wrong one. It must be... Go back to docs. So, no, I've lost it. Uh, anyway, there was something on here uh, I found just before, but I seem to have lost it. Um, yeah, and basically we're saying that Quantum, uh, uh, they have done an audit on there on here and there were two other places that have done audits uh, i can't find the docs i literally had it just before so that's a little bit sad that i can't find it now but obviously it's not just something that they're saying trust us they have had third parties come in uh, and test their networks and things like that so that's what makes me bullish on carver i'm a fan again i got in ages ago they were my second best performer until this big sort of crash now they have sort of slipped down. The performance hasn't been as bad, but I'm still in the green with them, uh, which is good. Uh, I haven't actually lost money uh, like I have with some of my others uh, currently. So that's a bit of an overview of Carver and particularly uh, the Harvest IO that's coming up. I am really looking forward to this and I'm going to be onto this straight away. And again, the fact that you can also use Chainlink uh, in the future. So if you're any, any Chainlink holders, uh, again, I'm not saying don't put all your chain link into it, but you can put some of your chain link into there uh, and earn some interest. I have Bitcoin, I have XRP, I have some, I had some USDX, I don't have any more at the moment. Uh, I've got the Binance coin, I definitely have Carver tokens, and I have some chain link. So I'll be putting all of that to work, not all of my total holdings, but I'll be putting all of those uh, coins, or at least a portion of my supply of those coins into harvest I'm, I'm fairly bullish on this at the moment so that's just a quick overlook and something i thought i'd do that was a little bit different from just the same old static market updates but don't get me wrong i still will be doing static static sort of market updates uh we can see that it's up a little bit from the other day but still down overall from where we were a little while ago all right stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on the gain train today bitcoin's going up so that's always good i'll see you next time